Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name's Emma Cownley and today I'm going to be taking you through my 2023 Filofax setup. This video has been um, hotly demanded, so I thought this year I would step it up by showing you exactly how I'm going to set things up as I'm doing it in real time. As you can see, I like to get creative with this shit, so you can expect a really good time here today. Okay, so I'm going to start with my monthly dashboard inserts. Now I bought these on Etsy from Zaza Paper. Usually I get the ones which have the date on them, they're set up for a specific year, but I was too impatient to wait for her to release the 2023, so I just got plain ones this year. Um, and usually I'll style these up in really kind of elaborate colourful monthly dashboards. So the back of this section is actually really perfect for me to write my sigils on. Now if you don't know what sigils are, they are magical symbols that you create custom for a specific purpose and I've created two of these for my Filofax. Uh, the one that I'm drawing right now is a sigil that has been designed to keep my Filofax private and safe. Now I'm aware I'm putting it out here on the internet, but it's more to do with stopping it from getting lost or stolen or you know, read by anyone for nefarious means. And the second sigil that I'm drawing now is to help the diary achieve its purpose really, uh, to help me feel creative and organized and inspired every time that I use it. So yeah, one sigil to protect it and one sigil to kind of help it reach its potential as it were. Uh, I've written a blog post on how to create sigils and what they actually are, so if you're interested in making your own, you can find a link to that in the description box below. And I'm going to loosely style this January dashboard up later on in the video, but for now I'm just going to write the, the month on it and the year. Now these are Leather Effect Monthly Dividers. I think I get them from Crossbow Planner. I'll leave a link to the Etsy seller in the description box below. I find it really, really handy to have monthly dividers like that and these kind of gold embossed leather effect ones are just right up my street. And the reason that I'm not just reusing the ones from this year is because I like to keep them intact when I archive this year's diary using those binder rings. And I'll show you all about that later on when we get to it. And now you can see I'm using the Filofax yearly overview page as a holiday tracker. I think it's really, really important, especially if you're freelance, to make a commitment to take time off. I'm a really big fan of taking time off. I think that it makes you better at what you do. It kind of helps you recharge and refresh your brain. You'll notice that I favour a week on two pages and that's just so that I can have my diary flat and open in front of me and be able to see the whole week. I'm a real kind of top down view type person. That's why I like my monthly dashboards and the week on two pages is just a really, really great way to see what's coming up. Now, anyone who watched last year's video will notice that I'm actually using 
erasable highlighters this year because in my my uh, half year update I complained that I had highlighted all of my holidays and things had changed around and I ended up with loads of highlighted holidays that I was never going to take and a bunch of you flooded my comments and told me that I really needed to invest in some of these uh, pilot highlighters that you can raise. So I got myself a set, I'm very excited and as you can see done my holiday up in it for next year so and here we go just sorting the pages out it's really satisfying i hope it's as satisfying to watch as it is to actually do And this is me just creating some standardized note sections. I noticed that I was using my notes pages in the Filofax for very specific things. So I thought it would be really cool to kind of structure those a little bit and make them formal note sections. So I like to record everything that I've read for the year on my reading list. And then I have a wish list of all of the things that I I want for my birthday and for Christmas and that's a list I'll add to throughout the year. I don't like spending money and I don't like gifts that I will never use. So this is my solution. Here I've just got some extra goal planning sheets that I bought last year. I didn't use them all and I thought I'd keep some back to use again for 2023. Uh, as you can see there I've listed out some goals in my Filofax that I'm thinking of, of doing for next year and I think that's just because when you sit down to plan your goals you can't think of everything just up front and so I make a list. And here's my expenses printout. I bought these from a seller on Etsy and I've actually, I kind of used them in a different way to the way that the creator intended. So what I've done is kind of adapted the PDF and kind of edited it to the way that I use the sheets. And actually looking back, I really wish that I had got some fancy thicker paper stock for this because they do tend to get leafed through quite a bit and they get quite flimsy. So I wish that I'd actually used a thicker paper, but that's something to think about for 2024, I guess. These um, are print PDFs, so they've got crop marks on them already, so it's easy to see where to cut. 
And what I do is I use one of my other formatted sheets to see where the holes need to go. So you can see I'm using the month overview here just to figure out where the holes should be. You can buy personal sized Filofax hole punches that are perfectly in alignment for the personal Filofax, but they're like 10 quid and there's no way I'm spending that money. So throughout this video, you'll see me using other dividers and other punctured pieces of paper as a guide and then just using the hole punch one, one side at a time. example this is me using a monthly divider to size up my brand new cover page for 2023 every year I like to make my own custom cover page for my Filofax and it just means that when I archive the year's Filofax at the end of the year and pop it into binder rings and have it kind of loose in my drawer it's easy for me to see which year is which and and it's just a really fun project to do. So you can see that I'm using the front cover of a magazine for this and that's just because I find card is just sometimes a little bit too thick especially when you're laminating it that makes it even thicker and I just prefer to use, you know, whatever I've got lying around. And in this case, it's the front cover of a pretty thick magazine. Now, I'm not going to show you exactly everything I do to make a custom cover page. I have an entire craft with me video linked in the description box below to talk you through exactly how I made this specific cover page. So if you're interested in my process and you want to watch a really chill you know, scrapbooking crafting video, then that's down there for you. Um, I, I'm guessing it's gonna be quite long, but I'm gonna talk you through everything I did to kind of come to this design and what my process is every time I do it. And now I'm just gonna use my trusty label maker to label this up for 2023. And again, when I archive this, at the end of next year it's going to be easy for me to see what year the diary was because I've labeled it clearly on the front and this is my very technical method for laminating my cover pages you just get lamination sheets from Wilkinson's good old Wilco's get an iron on that boff Bob's your uncle and then I just trim it. I like to leave quite a generous margin. The mistake I made with my first ever set of laminated uh, dividers was cutting it way too close to the edge and now they're kind of fraying and peeling. So now I just like to leave a little bit of a generous edge on there. And again, I'm gonna use one of these dividers to measure where the holes need to go. And with this one, I think I'm gonna use a paper clip to keep that where it is while I punch the holes, because you don't want that shit sliding around. And for this, I really don't mind if the holes go right through the design. I'd rather have the design go all the way to the edges when I'm doing my collages than have, you know, kind of a big empty space. So I punch holes right through the edge of my own designs, but it's on purpose. And now I 
can stick my label on here. Boff. So why don't I take a quick moment to show you my stylized monthly dashboards. As you can see, I have a lot of fun with them. I've got space for my mastermind um, meetings, tarot cards for the month and all sorts, and period tracker. So I had a card last year, but now I've started numbering the days on my actual diary and marking out with red and green when each phase of my cycle starts and ends. And this is so much easier because I can just see it right in front of me on the week. I know exactly what day of my cycle I'm on. And up here, holidays. So I, I've started highlighting that and seeing it move closer and closer. And my wind sheet. And this is my full moon tracker which I will be keeping, I think, for next year. And my old holiday sheet. So now I think I'll tackle my January spread, which looks like this. You can see space for the tarot card down in the bottom right. These are the dates to carry over, I just like to make a note of them in the back of my current file of facts so that when I'm all set up I can carry them over. And this is the point at which I'll go through and kind of add in birthdays. I'll just go back through my current file of facts, um, pull out any important dates, transfer them over and then when it gets closer to Christmas I usually get a witch's calendar from my dad, like an almanac that has all of the sabbats and esbats in it. So I'll usually find a quiet moment over the Christmas period to sit down and put all of those in as well and then fully transfer uh, 2023's inserts into the file of facts itself. And so now this is my archiving system. So obviously I can't have these pages floating around as they are. So I just use these binder rings from Amazon to keep all of the pages together. And it just means that I can use this as a diary while I'm still using my current file facts. And then when the year ends, I'll take all the pages out of my current file facts, stick them in the binder rings and take my new pages and pop them in. And it just means that you're not throwing away all of your diary pages at the end of the year because sometimes you need to look back over that and see what's gone on. So I do like to keep all my old pages archived in binder rings just in case. And there we go. All ready to go. And here's just a quick look at some of my other customised dividers. They're so much fun. <laughs> And that's me ready for the end of the year. <laughs>